the danger of the work being read in an anthropological way. Yeah. And to what extent did that sort of shape your mind or that discourse? How did you negotiate that vis-a-vis -vis this book? Because with the Patels, the idea of the stage portrait allows a certain complicity yeah. between yourself and the, yeah. and the subject. But here you just are an observer, observing. Yeah. And uh, there, it, it is a challenging way for a lot of photographers to deal with this kind yeah. of um, matter. I am just an observer and I am an outsider. Um, and unlike Barrow's here, oh, Hina's come. Oh, hi. Uh, unlike, unlike Barrow's here, Barrow's is a Siddhi scholar and she's been a scholar since the 80s. But she grew up in a Parsi family that worshipped the same saints as the Siddhis did. So her knowledge is much more that of an insider. And, um, uh, uh, you know, she spent her life doing uh, films on the Siddhi. So I've just spent a few years. So I'm no expert. And when these journalists ask questions about what is the African ancestry bit and what were all the questions, Barrows, that I was being asked. This, um, and I had to ask Barrows, you know, what are the names of all these musical instruments that they still use from Africa? And because my work wasn't about that. Of course, you can't ignore it because with Barrows, I've heard their music. I've, of course, seen them dance. Um, but I'm not an anthropologist and my knowledge has just been picked up while photographing. But as you, you've we've been talking about this for the past week, 10 days, is, the, is that this work also can be read within that framework. And it's also, it's a tricky, it's a, it's a tricky, it's a yeah. tricky point. Yeah. Uh, primarily because it's, you are an outsider. Yeah. And again, you have actually deviated from a way of making photographs that positions you as the, as the outsider looking at the other. How has that been for you? Because that's something that is inescapable with this work. Yeah. Um, you know, I haven't let it bother me too much because if I did, I think I, I just would have stopped somewhere halfway, you know. Um, I just kept telling myself, and then while editing and then with you, you were so brutal and remove this, remove that. But it was the right thing to do. And in fact, Devika felt even that picture of the coconut perhaps didn't belong to the book. Um, so there I was trying to make my forays into dargas and chillas and dhamal and goma and all that. And on the other hand, I was just doing simple portraits. <coughs> so... I knew I didn't want to mix up the anthropological side because I was not an expert. And I just, you know, I, I didn't want to just document something for the sake of documenting it because there's plenty of literature on the Siddhi. Um, but this is the first, first book or is, I mean, are there other historical photography books? There are historical books. books? There are many historical books. Um, uh, Mahmood has listed some of them uh, here. Barrows has been party to them. Um, uh, Ken Robbins, an American uh, academic, has done a book on the royal hapshi, which is the royal families left of the Siddhi, you know, and uh, the Janjira family, the Sachin family, then, of course, Malik Kambar's descendants. And he's done it more as a historian through coins and maps and inscriptions and mogul miniature paintings. So it's a different book. And mine is, I think, more a contemporary book of what the Siddhi are like today and through photographs. Do you feel that in, in some ways that this work can be read within a certain discourse that, again, keeps pushing this idea forward of the other. That's, I keep coming back to that mm. because that's something that's going to be, um, you know, discussed even after this book is released and how people are going to read it. Uh, we have very few 
uh, you know, emigrant communities that came to India, whether, I mean, whether they were, uh, the, let's look at the Parsis or let's look at, let's say, the Anglo-Indians, they've, they've all sort of in some ways been, uh, you know, now reduced to very small numbers. And being an outsider, uh, that also, it puts you in a, in a, in a more delicate situation vis-a-vis -vis how you handle that, uh, yeah. that, that relationship yeah. as a photographer. Yeah, it is delicate. It is delicate. It is delicate and, uh, you know, you may not always be able to get really... You know, there was a funeral I went to and in the room where they were wailing and mourning, um, they wouldn't allow me into that room. So, there are many situations like that and I was just looking at it as a photographer, you know. I wasn't thinking of the ritual of mourning. Um, but... At that point, I didn't even want to photograph from a window because it wouldn't have been right. So that part of that act of photographing then just gets... Erased. Just gets erased. So I think that's part of the, uh, uh, of the dilemma of being an outsider. I don't think you can do every situation, uh, however much you, you think you can. But not just yeah. being an outsider, it's also, the, I guess, the dilemma of being a photographer, yeah, looking I mean, at... No, carrying a camera no. is anyway makes you, you know, brings one step away from the person you're photographing. And then if you don't belong to that community, and it is an inclusive community, as the Siddhi are. But then, you know, I didn't feel that way with Juje and Juliana at all. And I don't think they really thought of me uh, as a total outsider either. And maybe it's because they Bombay. now live in Bombay and... Uh, they work in Bombay and they're, you know, in so many different situations which we can both identify with. A lot of photographs from, from the book are essentially about young girls and women and through marriage ceremonies and, and all those kinds of rituals. Very few men. It's almost as if there's a, there's a sense of distance yeah. that, is, that, is, that is visible yeah. in the book. You yeah. come close... Uh, not as often as you would, largely populated by women. Yeah, because partly I wouldn't go with an appointment plan or a diary. I just show up. And uh, the women were always around. And it was the women who could take me into the Darga or into the Chilla, who had the time to sit in the car and drive four hours away to show me something. Um, because I never went with a plan or, you know, I just show up. But if you were to sum up just this whole experience of, what is it, we're talking the last seven years of making this book, how many trips did you, did you end up actually making? I think for four years I photographed. Um, I, I, for this book I photographed very short bursts, like four-day trips, um, a couple of times every year, and sometimes more than a couple of times if something was, was happening. Um, yeah, I mean, so, and then t two years to make the book, which for all the various reasons... Can you, can you sort of elaborate on the book making? Because it's, it's a project that started in 2005, mm -hmm. culminated in 2013, yeah. Yeah. and a very significant amount of time was also spent in the making of the book, yeah. which is putting yeah. it together. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I've really learned a little bit about making a book because for the first time, I was with Aurobind then. I think this was my most hands-on experience because we worked in Hyderabad, we worked in Bombay, we worked, you know, with my other two books, the publisher just took it over. I didn't know what paper he was ordering. I, you know, I had no idea. And I was just told to okay the proofs and, you know, and that was it. And 12 hours later, you know, the pages had come out. But with Devika and Aurobind, this was... I made lots of foolish mistakes and uh, I learned from them. And I think, in a way, this was my first real experience of making a book because I really didn't understand tritone and greys and how to play with greys and how to bring more black in or... You know, I just, I just didn't know it. So no, no well, I'm not really talking about the 
the technical part. Yeah, the ah. part of it. Oh, I'm the talking, waiting for it. Yeah, no, no, not, not the waiting. Yeah. It's, it's taken you some two, three years to sort of edit the book, yeah. bring it down and, yeah. and work the various permutations and combinations. I mean, a photographer ends up shooting a lot of, of material yeah. and then the book could have gone in any direction vis-a-vis -vis the way you edited it. Yeah. So what was that process like? Because that would define how the book is read and, and, and understood yeah. by an audience. You know, I, I, uh, when I was editing, and you were there for one edit when we were removing a lot of pictures, I think in the end I just went by what works for me as a picture rather than am I getting everything about the Siddhi in my book? So there are more women, there are less men. There are, you know, I didn't think like that. I just thought, what are the pictures that are working for me as photographs? And then I knew I had to have the text of um, uh, a scholar <coughs> who would be able to, and no better person than Mahmood, because he's a fourth generation uh, Indian in Africa, and he is an African. And uh, for him, this was quite a wonderful experience, I think, meeting the Siddhi, because they've been here for as long as he's been away. So I think if I didn't have Mahmood's text, maybe this book may not have taken the shape that it's taken. So I, I, I really value that. And how did you think of Rory Bester as the afterword for the book? Well, you put this silly thing in my head that <laughs> I have to get somebody, get somebody to write. Not Rory and Bester, no, but... But anyway, so um, <laughs> we... we Devika suggested a, a wonderful critic called Okwi Enbazor and when he was in Bombay, Ranjit Hoskote brought him home and he liked the images and he, he very generously said, I'll write it, I want an edition print and I'll write it. And then when he went back to Brooklyn, he suddenly became director of this and director of that and in Berlin and... Photokina and God knows. Not Photokina. No, 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 what? <laughs> Not <laughs> Photokina. <laughs> that is, no, what? So, <laughs> anyway, he, he got huge positions. And, House and, to Kunst. And he forgot about my book. So, um, then I found Rory Bester on the net. I just, I just googled people who like photography, who are maybe interested in this subject. And he had just uh, uh, edited a show at the ICP with Okwi. And so I was happy that that connection was there. So I just wrote to him, sent him the PDF, and he loved it. But then we had the problem that he can only send it one day before we go to press. And we had that deadline because Exim Bank had said, we want the book on such and such date. <laughs> so anyway, as you said, last minute, everything worked. Before I conclude, I think it is, it's probably, I'm not stepping out of line and it might be just an appropriate moment to share this with people, but in September, um, Suni, I hope I'm not uh, stepping out of line, both Ketaki and Suni will be exhibiting their works, the Siddhis and the, uh, the Parsi, uh, Parsi project at the NGMA in Delhi. And I think that would be a wonderful way to broaden how this work travels and also gets placed within the institutions in India, which is, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a fine way for them to acknowledge these uh, two wonderful photographers. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. If there are any questions, uh, uh, this might be a good time to... The film. Uh, there's some empty chairs up in front, if any, those of you who are standing at the back. 
Ravi, you'd like to come up? There's some empty chairs up in front. No? All right. Okay. Charles, Charles, come up in front, Charles. Just a few words uh, by the filmmaker Barrows before we begin the film. Barrows. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you, Rashmi and Ketki, both of you for inviting me. Um, I just have a word of apology. This is my very first film on the Siddhis. And it was shot in different formats, SVHS, VHS, and mini DV. And it was edited on VHS, for those of you who are familiar with these formats. So whenever we go to a long shot, it is grainy and absolutely flat. And Ketki's pictures are a hard act to follow. So please bear with me and, and just note that this was my very first film but we selected it because it poses the dilemma of belonging and identity uh, for an ethnic minority in terms of where do you belong and how people can construct them and try to put definitions on them. You are, you are this or you are that. But maybe my intention was to have them talk. So the subtitle of the film is Voices of the Siddhis. We're Indian and African, Voices of the Siddhis. They express the dilemma. They express their concerns. And very much uh, as Ketki's pictures are a documentation sometimes, you just shoot when you're there or you miss the action. A lot of the film was shot like that. Immediately, the camera had to go in action and we shot. Okay, so thank you very much.
हिंदुस्तान भी छे आफ्रिका भी छे एवं हिंदुस्तान वाला हमने आफ्रिकन के हमने के हमें हिंदुस्तानी छे हमारा रिवाज जे छे तो हमारा हिंदुस्तानी छे ना आफ्रिका ना नहीं नहीं है हमारा जेटला भी रिवाज है रिलेटिव जब बताए हिंदुस्तान मत छे आफ्रिका नहीं शादे कोई कंसल नहीं हमारे बावागुर जिकर अंबा माता गरबा हो रीते बावागुर दादा ना एक गरबा स्वरूप सीधी गो डांस वगर बावागुर दादा ना कोई काम थत नहीं प्रोग्राम में लाइ जाए अँ बीजू के अमे लोग आ